Wow, if that isn't a fresh breath of spring, I don't know what is. Four degrees, sunny, a little bit breezy, but our snow is just about gone. Well, except for my yard. Kind of a cold sink in my yard because of the trees and the shelter, but the land, you probably can't see, but it is completely bare. We are losing our snow and we have a forecast that is warming. This weekend they're talking about eights. Depends which forecast you listen to. But after that, maybe a little cooler. So I think I'll just hold my bees tight. I was in the shed this morning just, just to see what is up. And the fans were on full right first thing in the morning. But the, uh, the aisles are nice and quiet yet. Oh, does this ever feel good? I'm not going to have time today, but with the mild weather this next few days, I'm going to get the ice off my loading pad, get this ready to go. And the welder has finished the work on the easy loader, so that's good. That's good news. So I'll get that back tomorrow and maybe get that unit together by Thursday. Oh, we are close. Let's just go take a peek at what the bees look like inside the shed. Then I want to show you what I'm doing with another project. Six degrees. I have the fan turned up high. Just to make a bit more of a windier environment in here now. There isn't much activity on the fronts. There isn't much for spotting, so that's a good sign. Let's just go down this alley here. There's quite a bit of drop. I'll have to come through here and do a sweep. Not much for bearding, just a little bit. A little bit he digging at the corners be nice to be able to get these girls out a bit early this year if we get the opportunity get some feed onto them there isn't a whole lot happening though quite content so that's a really good sign that fresh smell of spring is wafting through the shed and these girls aren't running. Be interesting to see. Whoa, look at the drop down there. I'll comment on that on a later day. But nice and content. Kind of reacting to the light a little bit here. All right. Boy, I can't wait to get back into these hives. Which leads you to the next project I'm doing. Just wait till I show you. So I've been collaborating with that crazy beekeeper from New Brunswick, formulating our continued formulation of our feed. And what we've settled on this year is if they want the corn, why not give it to them? So I got some corn gluten meal and I sent it through a pulverizer. My objective is to get the size of the grains down to under 40 microns, which is pretty small. And it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort to be able to get it that small. But that's the size where the um, about the size of a pollen grain, I guess, and the size of the bee can actually ingest and digest. So that is the size that we made it. And I'll just show you the verification of the size on that. 
So I'm taking this and Andrew has balanced out the profile. So I'll be adding some supplements just to balance the pro protein profile in it. Uh, and then we're fortifying it with vitamins and minerals and some other good stuff. Really interesting stuff. So we're focusing kind of like on a prebiotic and in a sense, I guess we have some probiotic going in there, but we're not focused on the probiotic nature of what we're putting within there. We're just trying to um, promote the environment which provides uh, the most abundant utilization of that feed, if I'm explaining that right. And like I said earlier in a post, I'll be focusing more so right out of the shed on an open feed strategy. We are also uh, mixing in some dry fats into this just to provide more, as close to that natural feed source as possible and a complete feed. And it'd just be interesting to see if the bees actually recognize it as a complete feed or if, they just, if they'd rather give a damn and just ingest the protein itself. But my strategy is to uh, open feed and take advantage of that very intense spring forage instinct and get as much of this dry stuff into them off the hop as I can. And then as we continue our second round of work, then focus on providing those patties to be able to welcome the emergence of those new bees into the world and then on to development. So I'll be bringing Carrie back to start some spring bee chores. We'll be mixing up dry feed and we'll be mixing up wet feed. And we need, well, there's a ton of this stuff right now. So hopefully you know, I'm gonna feed that and some more. So we're gonna be pretty aggressive on the feeding this year. And you know, if we get an early start, I said this last year too though. Last year I said, the bees come in the shed in terrific shape we had absolutely terrific early time weather. And then it turned cold and snowed right till the middle of May. I want to verify the particle size of the cornmeal that I ground up pulverized. So what I did is I wanted to know exactly what I was feeding because I don't want big particles. They tell me that you're targeting like that 40 micron size, which is Typically the pollen grains between, I don't know, 20 microns, 10 microns, whatever, all the way up to 200 microns. But generally that size that the bee can best utilize is that 40 to under 40 micron size. So I'm, I got a micrometer, I guess what you call this thing. And every one of those ticks apparently is 10 microns. So 10 of those ticks would equal 100 microns. So those two, between two of those large lines, they would consider 100 microns. So assuming that's correct, um, just dabbled a little bit of this cornmeal that I uh, ground up, placed it overhead. And as I focused through it, you're seeing a variability of particle sizes. So we'll start in the smallest particle size being like 10 microns, little wee tiny things. Uh, there's a whole bunch bunched together as you can see. So I'm seeing particle sizes, you know, there's 50 microns, 20, like lots of small little bits and pieces all the way through there. And then we get into the larger pieces would be 100 microns, 150 microns, 200. I'm not seeing anything that would be really over 200 micron size. There's two great big ones there. So assuming that they will be able to utilize all those small particles, which vary between the, like those specs are only 10 microns. So anything from 10 microns all the way up to 50 micron size. There's lots of those little pieces in there, up to 100 microns. So assuming that they're gonna be able to utilize all those smaller pieces, smaller than 100 microns, looks like I have lots in there that size. And then what will they do with those 200 micron size pieces? I'm not exactly sure. I guess if they can't consume it, they'll just throw it onto the bottom board and out the front. Or 
if they can consume it and they can't actively digest it, they should be expelling that out their hindgut if it's too big to digest. With cattle, all we do is we slow down digestion with straw or we add uh, corn or some kind of an energy source like oats or barley to uh, speed up digestion just to help digest some of the roughage. So we're constantly back and forth on mixing our diet with the cattle just exactly for that, to target the digestion of the feed source within the animal. So I can't do that with the bees, but what I can do is just make sure that things are ground a little more finely. I put soy flour underneath the microscope on the micron on this slide on the micrometer and they are tiny tiny little particle pieces like smaller than 10 microns so that that feed source will definitely be totally consumed so anyways for the purposes of what I can do here and with the equipment that I have to pulverize this cornmeal I'm gonna to have to be satisfied enough with this there's gonna be a bit of waste in there but whatever there's a lot of pieces in there that they'll be able to utilize and like uh, Andrew was saying, the proof is in the pudding. The proof is in whether or not the bees use it to use in, the, in their brood food. We should be able to see evidence of uh, the supplement directly within the brood nest. So there you go. Yeah, a lot of these particles are just a bunch of small particles all bunched together too. So I think my little experiment, my little procedure here, I'll mark it up as a semi-success, getting the sizes I want to the most part. And those big particles, I guess we'll just see how they deal with them. As long as I'm using this micron scale properly, assuming that my math is proper and every one of those ticks is 10 microns. As I forge ahead.